Welcome to Galisa Friendship Unit. You know, my name is Chris. I am here with Jake. Hey guys. Brian. What's going on? And Jeremy. Yo, what's up? Guys, I think it is undisputed that one of the highlights of E3 2019 was Keanu Reeves taking the stage and proclaiming himself to be not only a character in Cyberpunk 2077, not only a voice actor in Cyberpunk 2077, but the character with the second most dialogue and fully bodied, fully motion acted and voice acted. And that kind of got me thinking because we also have Death Stranding coming out right around the corner where we have Norman Reedus who is not only just voice acting but fully scanned in and representing himself. And that's, that's the thing that I want to talk about. It seems like games are increasingly using celebrities' likeness in games. And uh, I want to talk about if that's, you know, maybe a good thing or a bad thing. And the last example I'll say that is kind of like what we're maybe more used to is uh, Christopher Judge in, in God of War was Kratos. Obviously, he does not look like Kratos, but he, he did the voice acting for it. And that's kind of what we're more used to. Uh, so yeah I just you know that's kind of what we're going to talk about is is this push towards a using actual celebrities scanning them into games playing as the celebrities using their likeness is this a good trend is this a bad trend or is this maybe a neutral trend but real quick we are doing a giveaway at 600 subs we're giving away a copy of a hat in time you guys are more than halfway there since we announced the giveaway uh, so we'd super much appreciate your support a like and a sub would be awesome and uh, that's all, guys. I think we're I think we're ready. We're ready to dive right in. What do we think? I don't like it. <laughs> okay. No, no. All right. Lay it so, on. No, I I, I want to hear what you guys have to say because I got like I got like a like a philosophical problem with it. Deep. So okay. we we were kind of talking about this before we started the video, and Brian was like, I I don't like it. And that got me thinking <laughs> of like. Because originally I didn't have a problem with it, um, and I was kind of pro actors in video games, kind of to support um, not really like the validity of video games, but uh, also kind of the validity of video games. I mean, video games has for a long time been like a fringe hobby or activity, um, and now that there's like better support from big name actors i'm thinking like terry cruz has come out many times and said that he plays video games all the time with his son uh it kind of like makes gamer culture or just video games in general not as much of a taboo thing um, but with that being said i'm starting to starting to agree with brian a little bit that maybe it's not the best thing in the world but there are I think there's caveats to both sides of it. What do you see as being the downside, Jake? Um, so kind of like the immediate example that jumped to mind was uh, an iconic game like Mass Effect, for example, very character driven. Uh, and I mm -hmm. think that character driven gameplay, I mean, the unique thing about video games is that you can kind of put yourself in the world. And once you start to put recognizable big name actors that magic or that um that thing that game video games have to offer is kind of broken especially with role-playing games like you're saying like right and with uh god of war i think it's good that they i mean however you want voice the actor uh but it was good that kratos was kratos uh because you are playing as kratos you're not playing as christopher judge or something like that and I think if you, or like, for example, if you're playing Mass Effect and if Shepard was not just like the iconic default Shepard character, if he was like Bruce Willis or something, it would be, it wouldn't be as much fun. It would just be like, okay, this is weird. I feel like I'm playing like a movie or something. You, you kind of touch on like my biggest concern. I see benefits, but like my biggest concern or not concern is like, all of the IP, realistically, that are huge in video games are original characters that are totally, you know, they're literally 100% original. Yeah. Like, Link is an original character. Zelda is an original, you know, there's no 
person to attach that to. And just going back to Death Stranding, Hideo Kojima game, if you think of Hideo Kojima's last, like, you know, masterpiece of a series, Metal Gear Solid, you, you look at Snake and you don't think of a person. You think of Snake. If you look at Death Stranding, you, you look at Norman Reedus and you're like, oh, it's Norman Reedus. That's, I mean, that's just from my, my biggest negative side, but I see positives. I think that, um, I, I don't see it as being negative overall. I agree with what Jake was saying in particular, that I think it could be immersion breaking in certain contexts. But I think if you think about, um, an, another instance of a big name actor voicing a character, although they didn't, you know, he didn't look like the actor. Um, Patrick Stewart voicing the Emperor in Oblivion. Yeah. Um, and, and Jack Black, who's done uh, voice acting for a number of games. Sometimes the characters look like him, sometimes they don't. I think it's a good thing in as much as it helps raise the bar for voice acting in games, which is often abysmal. Um, so I think that if it makes... I think in that sense, if it helps to deliver the story and the dialogue in a more convincing, more interesting way then it's a positive um but i agree that in certain kind of rpgs it, it might not work but i don't see I, I i think that would just be a case of it being the wrong fit for that game i don't see it as being a negative trend per se well going off of the acting i see see my biggest positive of this whole thing is by bringing in like bigger better talent like a keanu reeves or a norman reedus you you get the really high quality acting and you're able to get that much closer to leaping over the uncanny valley, which for you know for those who don't know, that's kind of uh, in in especially gaming and like video animation that like, tears are really hard to do, for example, because it just looks it's, fake. You can't connect. It's why it's why everybody hated the Polar Express. Yeah, yeah. It's, why. It, it's yeah. It's hard for you to uh, make that human connection with uh, animated characters, but that top-notch acting. It's a combination of the top-notch acting with the advances in technology, but I think that top-notch acting just helps get that much further. Like, I watched the Death Stranding trailer, and I it, there's something interesting about that trailer. Speaking of crying, there's a, there's a nice music moment where they show a flash of the person's face, and then their name, and a flash of the face, and then a name for every major character. Yeah. Uh, almost every character, I think there's maybe one exception, every single one of those characters is crying, and it looks good, and that's hard to do. It's probably easier to model if you're modeling it exactly onto an actor's face and oh, yeah. get them to do something in studio. 100%. I think the other thing I wanted to bring up in regards to immersion breaking is that I, I, I don't think it's like inherently immersion breaking either because like in a good movie that has a, you know, a star or an A-list actor in it, um, you're not... You're not getting lost in the fact that, or rather, you are getting lost in the film, even though you can look on screen and say, "Oh, that's Leonardo DiCaprio," or "Oh, that's Liam Neeson," or whoever it is. You, you, they're still believable as a character. You can understand them as something separate than just being the celebrity that they are in real life. Sometimes, but that's the because sometimes, sometimes, well, sometimes they almost make the movie or they write the movie around that actor. And that's that's my problem with them looking like. So, like, where they look like and behave like the celebrity in real life, like, that that destroys the immersion. It's not just immersion breaking, like, it's just it's just about the celebrity at that point. You know, it, 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 think about what, if they did this to GTA, like, how, that would be terrible. No one would like it, because it's the, you, you can't get into a game world like that with expectations about what the character is supposed to be because they look like Bruce Willis or they look like you know Walter White or whoever it, it's it, you can't you can't do that I, I understand like the voice things and I understand like a minor character that looks like a, a real world person voiced by that person but you can't make the entire game about it because that it, it's just a movie at that point and that's i don't know it, it, it's you can't blur the line so much there and that's that's what my problem with it is is you, you, video games and movies are fundamentally separate they're both big things nowadays they're both huge budget things but video games more than movies 
Right, and and there's huge, but there is still huge markets for both of them. What I'm concerned about is what's happened to the, the movie industry in the past, like, 30 years, where they haven't really come up with any new ideas. It's just kind of rehashing the same thing over and over and over again. Like... I would say video games are probably more guilty of that than film. Yeah, but with video games, there's an experience there. You're not just watching like with a film; it's the same every single time. Oh, dude, like, the Star Wars, no Star Wars, man. Uh, I mean, almost all video games are like identical. Very few video games offer something new, like within their genre. Yeah, but you're, it's still more of an experience. Like you're not gonna watch a movie for if you put 15 hours into a game, you haven't played the game for that long, right? Usually, I would say. So, if you watch a movie seven times in that's a row... That's a few times. Don't you think you'd be sick of it? Yeah, but that's also different, because but, the movie only has a runtime of, like, two hours. But but watching any film, like, or if you watch the entire Lord of the Rings trilogy... Well, that's not... But I have... I mean, I have watched the entire Lord of the Rings trilogy, the director's cut, which would be, like, you know, 12 or 14 hours, whatever it is. But I agree. They're more interactive. I agree. And, but the interaction adds something. You're not you're not just and that kind of ties back into the immersion thing, you're not just watching what someone else has decided this sequence of images should look like. You're you have a role in it. Well and, So at least with Death Stranding you get to play like they uh, they rig a you know, a model onto Norman Reedus' scanned body, so you effectively play as him. You do play it, right, but that still it, it changes. I agree. Your expectations of what you know, and it, it's like well, you, you have enough money from the movies and TV and whatever. Why don't you just keep doing that? It's and... it's gonna be weird having like a like we already have like at the Game Awards we already have like a best actor, best actress type thing, but it's gonna be weird when it's like you know actually them so like arthur morgan from red dead redemption 2 who i forget his name but he won uh at the game awards and he walked up and i you know i had never seen him so when i saw and i called carly over or my girlfriend because she she watched me play a lot of the game i was like oh this is arthur morgan and she came out and she was like what that's him like that's what he looks like and i was like yeah but now going forward you know best actor it's gonna be like you know, not guillermo del toro but you know Keanu Reeves. Keanu Reeves comes up. It's going to be like kind of like the Oscars a little bit. I think that uh, the, I don't know, Death Stranding is kind of a different beast because Kojima is always kind of straddling of the line between film and video games. So right. the fact that he's bringing in actors and his games are already cinematic and film-like and I don't anticipate Death Stranding being a character-driven game. There's really like seems like there's going to be a set very compelling story and that's about all uh but there's definitely i mean those a lot of rpgs are character driven and once you start to bring in the likeness of big name actors you get the baggage or the history of big name actors do, do you know uh, who john berthnall is no 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 oh, well <laughs> he's he's an actor uh, and he's his likeness is going to be in a uh, a, in a Ghost Recon game from Ubisoft. So, and that was kind of like I, I agree with the Kojima thing being straddling movies and games, but this is the well, Keanu Reeves and John and Death Strand. Like these are a lot of games are starting to do this. But doesn't it fundamentally just give you something to hide behind to not show that you have a shit game? Yes, like if you're like, this I think is, so. This is X video game featuring whoever. Yeah, you bring them out. Like, you're you're using that, you're leveraging that name, and you're you're not doing what a video game is supposed to do, which is bring a new experience, bring something new to the table, or some element of gameplay or a twist that you haven't seen before. Movies do that too. Movies do that, but not. It, it, it's different. I think it can be a crush, but it doesn't have to be. Again, there are games like I think like, so, I think Keanu so, Reeves looks cool in that game. And I think that to me, because the Kojima games are so cinematic, I thought it seemed appropriate to have big name actors 
because they're really playing a role. They're not just a thin, because that's the other thing. Characters in video games are so often thin and boring and not developed. Like, there's a reason they're also a side. Like, you could be hiring a, a star just to bring in star power to, as you said, Brian, to hide behind, like, oh, we got so and so for our new game. Don't focus on the fact that it sucks. But you could also be bringing in a, a great actor because you really want someone to develop a role. That, right, that a character, as you said, that you're going to spend maybe 30, 40, 50, 80 hours with. I think it, I, that's why I just really feel it could go either way, like in movies. You have movies that suck ass, but they sell tickets because they have a big name attached to them. And then you have great movies that also feature great talent. Yeah, and I mean, I think that's probably an accurate comparison. Like, I, I don't have a problem with Death Stranding pulling in big names because it looks like, again, it's a cinematic game. It's kind of movie-like inherently. But I, I just don't want to see this become a trend of... Like, when, when Chris, you said that movies have to innovate too, right? Like, But they depend on the actors in the movie, in, in part, but in large part, on the people that are in those roles to help that innovation a lot yeah to like, sell the story a, yeah right exactly so that's that's what the movie innovation is based on it's based a lot on the talent of the director and the talent of the people actually on the screen In video games the innovation is more technical it's not about who did the voice and who provided the character modeling for this person you know it, it that's not really what it's ever been about i don't think and it's uh, you can't merge the two things into one and i see that as kind of i see all of this as kind of a step in that direction yeah um i don't know i was so i was gonna try and tie it into what you were saying brian but i i don't know i can't find a way but we mentioned that the uh there is a time and a place for bringing in these big name actors. And we mentioned ghost recons bringing in some big names. And I think that's, that is a game that could benefit from it. Like for example, John Krasinski, uh, did the Jack Reacher, Jack Ryan series on Amazon prime. And it was great. And if they brought someone like the Jack Reacher, the Jack Ryan character that John Krasinski did, and brought in the likeness of John Krasinski into a Ghost Recon character. That would be great because he would that character in that show fits perfectly into like the squad in a Ghost Recon game. Uh, same with uh, uh, the new Cyberpunk 2077. Keanu Reeves, his character in uh, John Wick fits perfectly with the character it looks like they're going to have him play in cyberpunk so i think those are games that benefit from it because the established character that everyone's kind of familiar with is being brought into the games um and it, it seems like it would work there so let me take you back to 2002 real quick jake there were a lot of lord of the rings games that came out would you have rather like it, let's pretend these came out in 2019 so the technology is where it's at and whatever would you have rather uh the slightly like for the hobbit example the slightly more animated art or would you rather have them been scanned in like the app you know i'd rather have them scanned in i mean look at the avengers game that just got announced yeah that's a good that's a really good on that because they do not look like the movie characters that's good ammunition like that looks rough (laughs) right like Tony Stark I, I looks like me, except it's leaning on a franchise. Which well, is sometimes the, same thing the as leaning on an actor. But sometimes the appeal of a game is to play as a character, like the Batman Arkham series, or um, a lot yeah, of the Star I'm, Wars. I'm sure that's it's it's like a how much is that game? Sixty bucks. Yeah. So you're gonna pay, you already saw the movie at. 15 bucks or whatever movies are nowadays and now you're gonna pay 60 bucks to play a shitty video game as that character that well, that one like might exploitation well, i don't know like that one Spider-Man. might be shitty but some of them are good yeah the spider-man games are supposed to be fantastic but no one would buy them if like spider-man was 300 pounds and green and <laughs> no that sounds arms. awesome we like, should make that <laughs> no one's gonna play like a shitty off-brand spider-man game 
Yeah, but you don't need a lean on Sp like Spider Man was a good movie too back in the early two thousands, and you, know, you don't have to lean <laughs> on that. Right, but I think that the established character, like we tie characters to what we see on films very often. I mean, look at books that get turned into movies and they get like their their book covers get re-released with the faces of the actors it's just yeah. because we associate so strongly with them and we tie that character to them i mean the yeah, the actor just... that played joffrey in game of thrones like i'm sure he's not a shitty guy but everyone thinks he is because he played <laughs> a shitty character like it's it's just our nature to tie it to the appearance of people yeah but I forgot what I was gonna say. Sorry. <laughs> That's fine. Ah, this is this. We're we're kind of deadlocked. Deep. There's there's definitely pros and cons. I think it's fair points all around. I think at least to my, in my opinion, it, it depends so much on the studios. Like there there are gonna be games that are shitty and like totally do lean on it. There are gonna be games that are great that utilize it. There are gonna be games that are great that don't utilize it and shitty games that don't have big actors. That's a good. That's a good summary, Jeremy. I like that. We're You're gonna welcome. use that summary to wrap the video. <laughs> um, what what should our viewers do, Brian? What should they do during this these these trying well, times? These trying times. These trying times. Well, uh, if you would like to contribute to the, the philosophical discussion, you can engrave your your thoughts if you will in the uh the word box there and like chris said at the beginning of the video we are giving away a steam code uh when we hit 600 subs so go ahead and click that subscribe button because you know if you watch this far you probably liked it and we do have a veritable shit ton more content exactly like this on our channel so go ahead and click that subscribe button won't you and uh smoke them if you got them guys that's all for me tonight, Chris. Thank you, Brian. We'll catch you guys next time.